And once I do that, I come up with $1.15. And that is how much a bar of soap costs me to make. Hey guys, <laughs> I am back with another video and today's video is all about COGS. COGS being cost of goods. And in this video, I talk about what COGS are and why they're so important for your business, how to actually come up with your cost of goods and how to make a spreadsheet so that you're able to track all of your COGS and make sure that you know exactly to the penny how much a bar of soap or bath bomb costs you to make. If that is something that you are interested in, Keep watching. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Jerrica and on this channel, I talk all about my soap and bath bomb business. I talk about how I make my soap and bath bombs, how I sell them, and even things like this boring admin stuff that even though it's boring, it's all super important to help you guys run a business. And now without further ado, let's get into it. So what is cost of goods? Cost of goods in a nutshell is everything that it costs you to make your products. And that can include everything from the materials that you use in order to make your product. It can even include your time and also the utilities that you use in order to make your products. And the reason why this is so important is because you want to make sure that you are charging the right price for your products that allows you to pay for all of the expenses of your business, but also give you adequate profit and that is what we are all in business for right to make some profit <laughs> now i mentioned before how your cogs can include your time and also the utilities that you've used to make your product but to keep this video more simplified and to the point i will only be discussing materials used to make the product and not all of that other stuff but once you have this basic principle then it should be pretty simple for you guys moving forward to add those other things if you want to include them in your consideration when determining your cogs so how do you come up with your cost of goods it's actually pretty straightforward in order to come up with your cost of goods you need four key pieces of information number one how much each material costs you how much of that material you get when you purchase that material how much of that material you include in your actual recipe and the last piece is how many units your recipe yields you and in determining your cogs you're going to include all of the stuff that you used to make that soap. So to use soap as an example, you're gonna include everything that you used in order to make that soap. So for me, I use a variety of oils and butters. I use kaolin clay. I use mica to color the soap sometimes. I use oxides. I use a variety of powders. Sometimes I sprinkle botanicals at the top of my soap. All of these things you are going to have to include into your cogs in order to determine how much it actually costs a bar of soap to make. And if you're thinking that is way too much information, how in the world am I going to keep track of all of that information? That is where either software or spreadsheets come in. If you're using a PC, Soap Maker 3 is software that you can purchase download and install and this software actually helps you determine your cogs all you have to do is plug in the numbers and it does all of that for you but if you're like me and you don't have a pc you're a mac user or you really like to use excel then you are going to have to use excel if you want to keep track of everything if anyone knows any mac friendly or apple friendly software out there that does all of this similarly to what soap maker 3 does for pc computers please let me know in the comments <laughs> and because i don't have a pc this video will show you how i create my spreadsheet that i have that keeps track of all of my cogs and how much my materials costs and i will show you that sheet right now so here you can see my cogs tracker that i have in my excel spreadsheet sheet and I have all of my materials listed down here. I have the amounts, I have the source, the cost, and the cost per kilogram and then cost per gram. The sooner you start organizing your materials in this way, the less chaotic that it gets for you because if I were to start fresh, it would be a lot of work. So while you're small and while you have very few materials, start now. <laughs> So that is the main tab over here that I have called material costs. The next tabs have all of my recipes and these tabs all speak to the original material costs tab. And that's the cool thing about Excel. Different tabs can speak to different data points so that if I were to update something on the material costs tab, that will change the numbers 
in the subsequent tabs that have pointed to that piece of information. So for example, if I were to update the cost of olive oil in the field of E4, this would change anywhere that refers back to any of these numbers in the rest of the sheet. So it's pretty cool that way. So the next part of the video, we'll be walking you guys through how to create a sheet like this for you guys at home. So here I am with a fresh workbook. And the first thing I'm going to do is click the A1 cell and I'm going to write material costs. And then further down, I'm going to use the A column to list the type of ingredient. And this is to help better organize all of the ingredients so that I can put like ingredients with like ingredients. So I'm gonna write type as the column name, and then I'm going to write oils, butters. And then the next column, column B, I'm going to use column B as my ingredient column. So I'm going to call it ingredient, the next column, column C, I'm going to call it the amount. And I'm going to point out the unit of measure here, and it's going to be in liters or in kilograms. Column D is where I'm going to list my source and supplier. And this is important for when you are ordering more product. You can see exactly where exactly you got that material and perhaps use that as a way to compare it to other suppliers moving forward. So I'm going to put source supplier and the next column i'm gonna put the cost of that material including tax and the reason why you want to include tax is because we are trying to figure out exactly what it costs us to make that bar of soap or bath bomb and you have to include the tax in those costs the next column column F, I'm going to break down that cost by the kilogram. So for example, if I'm buying three liters of olive oil, I'll want to know how much one liter of olive oil costs me. So I'm gonna call that cost per liter or kilogram. And I'm gonna put the dollar sign there. And now the last column is going to be the cost per gram. Cost per gram. So now I have all of my columns set up and this is technically ready at this point to receive the information. So to continue to use olive oil as an example, I'm going to write under the ingredient column, olive oil. And if I were to buy that olive oil in three liter amounts, I'm gonna write the number three here. So one liter is equivalent to about one kilogram. So I kind of see those two as interchangeable. And moving forward, I'm going to be considering that three liter jug as three kilograms of olive oil. And for my source and supplier, I'm gonna write Costco. And the cost, including tax, is $15.69. And now to get the cost per kilogram, I'm going to divide that cost, including tax, by the amount that that material comes in. So it'll be $15.69 divided by three. Excel is amazing in that you can input formulas and you can use those formulas again and again. And it's really in your best interest to get into the habit of entering your data using formulas instead of calculating things outside of Excel. I won't go into exactly Excel formulas, but I will show you the formula that I use here. So I will start by entering an equal sign and I'm going to go 15 dollars and 69 cents divided by three. So I will click this field and I will use the backslash and that's the dividing symbol. And then I'm going to click the amount and that's gonna give me my cost per liter or kilogram. And now to get the cost per gram, I'm going to break that down even more by dividing that number by 1000. So again, I'm gonna do the equal sign. I'm gonna click that number and divide it by 1,000. And that has given me the cost of olive oil by the gram. So now that we have that information, we can now break down how much the olive oil that we use in our soap recipe, how much that costs us. So for the very first sheet, you're going to use this for all of your materials and break it down in all of these columns as they come in, as you buy them. And the subsequent sheets after that, you are going to put your recipes. So this first sheet, I'm going to call it material costs and now i'm going to create a brand new sheet so that i can build out how much my soap recipe costs me to make so i'm going to click the plus tab to create a new sheet and on this new sheet i'm going to write my recipe down i'm going to go into my b column here and use this column to input my materials so i will call this 
materials. And the next column after that will be how much of that material I use in my recipe amount. And I'm going to put that in grams. And in the next column, I'm going to put the cost per gram. And the last column is going to be the cost in the recipe. So let's continue using olive oil as an example. Over here, I'm going to put olive oil. And the amount that I use of olive oil in my recipe is 1,012 1, grams. And in order to get this cost per gram, I'm going to want this field to talk to the very first page in my material cost page. And the reason why I want to do that instead of inputting the cost per gram myself is because if that number were to change, if I were to get olive oil at a cheaper price, or if the cost of olive oil were to go up, then I want to make sure that I'm only updating one spot and not going through each and every page in my Excel sheet to make sure everything is updated. In order for this cell to talk to the cost per gram that, that I have already calculated in the first sheet, I'm going to put my equal sign in there. I'm going to click the material costs page and I'm going to click the cell that already has this data in it. So once I click that and press enter, it's inputted into my soap recipe page. So in order to get the cost in the recipe, I'm going to go ahead and use another Excel formula. So I'm going to put the equal sign. I'm going to click the amount in grams. I'm going to use the asterisk symbol, which is the Excel symbol for multiplying. And I'm going to click my cost per gram. And that has given me the cost of olive oil in my recipe. So you will be going down all of your ingredients that you use in your recipe and figuring out how much each of these ingredients are costing you. But you might be wondering, I have a lot of different types of soap. How do I possibly keep track of all of that? And what do you do in order to keep it simple for you? So what I do is because my soap base is identical for all of my different types of soap and there's only variety in the fragrance oil that I use and the colors and the botanicals that I use, I will create a soap base calculation and that will determine how much the just the base costs without any of the extra stuff for different varieties of soap that I make. So once I determine the soap base amount, then I will use the lines beneath it to determine how much the different fragrance oils cost, how much the botanicals cost, and how much the micas cost. And then I will add those two amounts together to form what the soap actually costs. So if you look here, I have already done that with my soap recipe. At the very top, I have my soap base and I've calculated how much just the soap base costs me. And down here below, I have all of the different types of soap listed. Using my grapefruit sunrise soap as an example, I have my grapefruit fragrance oil listed. I have the petals that I use on top, all of the different colorants that I use, and I even include my shrink wrap and my labels costs. And all of those together, I come up with a total amount and I have it separated in two different kinds. One is naked and one is wrapped because I offer those two options when I sell soap online. So once I have those totals, in order to get the complete cost, I will add that with the soap base and I will list them to the side. So over here you can see my total soap naked is all of my ingredients minus the shrink wrap and the labels. It's that amount added with my soap base and that came up with the number $24.15 or 16 cents if you were to round it up. Now in order to get the cost per bar, we are arriving at the final piece of the puzzle and that is knowing how much your recipe yields. So for me, my recipe yields me about 21 bars of soap. So you are going to take that number, $24.16, and divide that by 21. And once I do that, I come up with $1.15. And that is how much a bar of soap costs me to make. So now that you know how much it costs you to make a single bar of soap, you're going to have to figure out how much you wanna charge for that bar of soap that will pay for all of the expenses of running your business, but at the same time, allow you to have enough profit so that it's worth it for you and that you're paying yourself enough money. So what is normally suggested is to take that number, in my case, $1.16, and multiply that by four. And that is what people normally suggest for your retail price. Do you have to charge that? 
absolutely not. There are so many factors that you should be considering when you are pricing your soap. Definitely do not go lower than that number times four because you will for sure be selling yourself short. And the reason why I say that is because if wholesale customers approach you about purchasing your soap, they look at the retail price and are expecting that you are going to offer them about 50% off of that retail price. So if you are underpricing yourself at the retail level, then wholesale customers are going to be expecting quite a low number when they approach you. So always go above at least four times what it costs you to make your soap. Another reason why I go higher than times four is because I'm accounting for my time and how much I value myself as the artisan making that soap. And that is definitely worth something as well. Another reason why I go higher is because there are costs that I'm not even thinking about that go into making that soap. And I know at some point I will be quantifying all of that and we'll be able to get a clearer picture the longer that I'm in business. Right now I'm learning how to do all that right now, but because I don't exactly know everything, you definitely want to give yourself enough cushions so that you are for sure giving yourself the profit that you deserve and that you're able to sustain the business and yourself, giving yourself a good enough salary so that it is all worth it for you. So that is it. I really hope you found this type of video informative. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more about how to run your business and what you should be doing, subscribe. And everyone who has already subscribed, we are so close to 15,000, which is just amazing. Thank you again for supporting me and my business and continuing to watch me. So keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.